so we're here uh, for first Fridays at the Natural History Museum and it's kaiju themed. And so I just did a walkabout in the Godzilla suit. We walked into the dino hall here and, and did some meet and greet with some people. That's why I'm all wet and sweaty and in need of water. <laughs> As part of its annual First Fridays program, the Natural History Museum of L.A. County has hosted countless membership celebrations over the years, but none have reached the heights of tonight's theme dedicated to giant monsters and giant robots. For this First Fridays, we're all about kaiju, talking about giant Japanese monsters, Asian pop culture, and I like to talk about how Godzilla has changed over the years thematically, uh, design-wise, and how that allows us to better understand how people process grief and destruction. Uh, but yeah, Godzilla is a very fascinating topic, and I think anyone who comes to a museum, they're here to see some giant reptilian monsters, whether that be Tyrannosaurus Rex, Godzilla, King Ghidorah, what have you. The first Friday's activities begin early in the year and continue through the end of spring. Anyone can purchase tickets while museum members get in free, and much of the activity takes place in the museum's nature garden. Visitors can enjoy food and drinks, as well as live entertainment, and the event attracts a young, eclectic crowd, as well as several families. Among the many educational groups participating is an organization of scientists and educators called Cosplay for Science. The group encourages youngsters to become more involved in science by making it relevant to their everyday lives, and the kaiju-themed evening was a good chance to pique their interest. Kaiju comes from a Japanese word, and it means strange beast, but it's since become a, its own unique um, media genre where it's all about like these giant monsters, and it really originated with like Godzilla, right, and like um, it from Japan, and it, it comes from like the, the terrible thing that happened with um, the atomic bombings in Japan. And so it comes from that fear of nuclear disaster and kind of abuse of science. And that's kind of where that movie came from and has kind of evolved and changed the way we think of kaiju and giant monsters today. Sounds like it came from like uh, the early 40s maybe. Yeah, I think it was like the 1950s, I believe, is when like the first movie came about. So yeah. All right, so when we say kaiju, we mean more than just Godzilla, right? Yeah, there's lots of cool giant monsters from the genre. Godzilla is probably like the most recognizable, but you've got things like Pacific Rim that came out recently, and you've got all those monsters in there that were called kaiju. Um, you've got other types of, you know, from the Godzilla uh, series, like Mothra, um, Rodan, all of those cool monsters. Anywhere you see a giant monster, they can be called kaiju, pretty much. So your goal is to uh, let everybody know what it is. Yeah, not just what it is, but also, you know, I'm a paleontologist by training, and what I love to do is talk about the science that exists and is woven into all these really cool science fiction narratives. And with kaiju, it's no different. There's a lot of science that goes into not only creating these really cool monsters, but that exists in the stories themselves. So we love to share and talk about all those cool science stories that exist within the media stories. We're here at the Natural History Museum, and I'm wondering, are there other places where people can see you? So we're here at First Fridays with Natural History Museum. This is where we love to come and talk about. But you know, we also go to like a lot of the Comic Cons. So we're at Los Angeles Comic Con. Um, we'll be in San Diego Comic Con later this year. Um, basically, anywhere where we can find science and cross it with um, pop culture, that's usually where we try to be. Well, Gabriel, I guess you're one busy guy, aren't you? We try. <laughs> anywhere we love talking about science. Guests of the museum on any First Fridays are free to wander the legendary halls of the Natural History Museum, including the Age of Mammals, the nature lab complete with live specimens of insects and reptiles, and other areas which feature artifacts of ancient cultures and civilizations. Dinosaur Hall is certainly the museum's most popular destination, and on this particular evening, the halls of the museum are shaken by what is arguably Kaiju's biggest star. 
The evening's main attraction was none other than Godzilla himself, played to perfection by a talented suit performer who quite literally pours his heart and sweat into what is certainly an exhausting experience. Uh, for some reason you seem a little exhausted, why would that be? Uh, I just walked around in a very hot Godzilla suit. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that's the one behind you. Did you create that, by the way? I did. I made this with my friend Justin Caldera. He oversaw the functionality of the suit, so to make sure it was all like flexible and able to you know, walk the distance that I walked, uh, he kind of helped me oversee that, and then I did all the detailing. I had to be careful I was following behind that I didn't step on the tail. I, I like the tails long, I do, yeah. Yeah, but that, and that fellow who was guiding your tail, he was a little bit nervous. Yeah, I have a crew uh, helping me out. They have to guide me. So I have a tail wrangler trying to make sure it doesn't get in the way of anybody or hit anybody, and then I have someone making sure I'm not going to stomp on them. How do you get into that? With everybody's help, I suppose. Yeah, I have to be lifted up into the suit. Uh, I can't get into it by myself. I need, I need help. I need shoulders to lean on to. Um, people to like hold tension on the legs so I can really sl slip my feet in with the shoes too and in the feet. So yeah, it takes a whole team to, to get me inside. The team of at least three assistants helped Christopher climb into the massive suit, guiding him inside through the back. The legs must be positioned just right and even his hands are directed inside the massive paws so that his fingers can move each claw independently. Visibility is limited, and one of the team acts as a guide to assist while Christopher is walking, just to make sure he doesn't trample on any unsuspecting villages. Uh, what is it made out of exactly? It's made out of different kinds of foam rubbers, so upholstery foam, foam that you find in like mattresses and chairs, um, L200 foam, which is, it's a, if you know what like the child's play mat uh, puzzle piece foam pieces are, it's that kind of foam just without the little ridges that are on it. Uh, did, did you have a, a plan, like a diagram? Yeah, it was a lot of drawings, a lot of doodling, a lot of watching. I watched a Stan Winston school, uh, how to build a kaiju suit course. It's an online course that you can view. Um, that really did a lot of help for me, so yeah. Right, Christopher, how long did it take you to create this monster? This monster took 14 months to make. Um, I, I was building it in the spare time that I had. I was working at Disneyland at the time, living out in Riverside, California, so I didn't have a whole lot of spare time, so that's why it took as long as it did. But yeah, it was just a passion project. I built it out of my grandma's garage. Now, who were these people who were brave enough to walk around with you? So they're friends of mine, uh, Colton Kolbaba, John Runkle. They've helped me in the past for different appearances that I've made with the suit. So any conventions that we've taken it to, they've always been around to kind of help me, uh, you know, assist me with getting in and out, uh, transporting it. So they've been a huge help. After about 40 minutes of walking throughout the museum halls, the big lumbering beast heads back. The time spent inside the suit is limited due to heat exhaustion, and knowing that Christopher needs a well-earned rest, the team helps lay the massive suit on its side in order to allow the exhausted suit performer to climb his way out. I know it's been a, a long adventure. You've never fallen asleep in there, have you? Not fallen asleep. Close to passing out, but not fallen asleep. <laughs> As night falls on the celebration, the live music performances are complemented by the many cosplay characters who are attracted to this spirited gathering. I see you have arrived with an adequate uh, defense mechanism here. I do, I have a lightsaber. Um, specifically, only Jedi have lightsabers. So I am a Twi'lek. Um, yeah, so Rakisitra is my name. And yeah, that's what, this is what Jedis use when yeah, when in battle. We try not to use it too terribly often, but yes. So. Well, I, I think it's better than some uh, devices I've seen. Yes, I love using my um, my lightsaber, so yeah, it's, it's fun. It's a pretty good lightsaber. It's nice and weighted. It's pretty good for it, yeah. You haven't uh, done anybody in yet tonight, have you? Mm, no, not at all. I mean, if it 
few people get in my way unwarranted, then I might have to, but I try not to. I try to be, uh, I try to only use this when it's absolutely necessary, so yeah. We would like to know if you're going to be in the contest tonight. Yes, I'm going to totally be in the contest tonight, yes. Absolutely, I'm really excited for it, so yeah, it's going to be fun. If you love their cosplay, you're going to clap your loudest, and the winner with the loudest um, cheers is will be our winner for the cosplay contest tonight. Sound good, everybody? Yeah. All right, let's get started. What is your name? With Roxicha brandishing her lightsaber, the costume contest begins with more than 20 participants, including families, competing for the title of Best Cosplay Character. Though robots are big in this competition, some are actually quite little, and they instantly become audience favorites. The many participants include a mix of Star Wars characters, robots, and kaiju, as well as one familiar looking host. I can't help but notice that you were hosting the costume contest tonight. Yeah, that was really fun. The, the Natural History Museum of LA County does a great job and asked us to host it. And it's just like a really fun way that folks can have fun and be in a science and educational setting but still just, you know, dress up and like do fun things where it normally doesn't exist. So things like First Friday and having a cosplay contest at a Natural History Museum is just a really fun way to get people engaged and, you know, enjoy science. After the group photo, we make our way back to Dinosaur Hall to catch Tony Turner's insightful lecture. For 40 minutes, Tony speaks of the devastation of the atomic bomb, Godzilla's nuclear origins, and his influence on pop culture. Are you an expert on Godzilla? Uh, yes, I would say maybe in our office, I'm certainly a Godzilla expert. Uh, but that's the great thing about First Fridays. It's bringing folks in to rediscover the museum. And we're able to kind of broaden our talks, do some much more fascinating niche things. So Godzilla really fits right in, doesn't it? Absolutely. I think Godzilla fits uh, thematically right in. I don't think Godzilla could fit in a museum itself, but yes, I think Godzilla fits right in to our exhibit halls. 